Hey ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Khan Or coming to you with another Company of Heroes 2 match. This one between Jezelin over here in the east playing the Soviets in the blue trunks. And in the west spawning um, as that lovely, lovely faction, the Wehrmacht. In the red trunks, it is Insane Dev M. This is from the recent WPC finals. Um, I'm, I'm sure that some of you might have been able to see this out as it was streamed, but for those of you who have not... Um, excellent, excellent series back and forth. Jeslin is building a special rifle com um, command, not a usual thing you see. You do see P uh, penal battalion troops coming out. But in terms of his commanders already, we're going to see guard motor coordination tactics, tank hunter tactics, which is uncommon, but kind of cool nonetheless. And the partisans, of course. And Dev M, for his own part, is bringing along mechanized assault doctrine, mobile defense, and lightning war. Uh, the map itself, of course, is Kaladni Ferma. But it's not winter, no, no, sir. We do have the rare, rare bit of weather where it is not actively snowing or cold as all get out for those poor, poor attacking Germans. Um, very, very early coming out of, of Dev M, he's just going to run with a Grenadier machine gun opening. A little bit uncommon. Um, it does allow him to get a good base of fire out as needed. Um, but doesn't sacrifice too much in the way of kind of static weapons play. Meanwhile, uh, Jeslin, for his own part, is bringing in penal troops, which will be slightly more effective um, fighters than their con uh, conscript brethren. And I kind of wonder if that means he's signaling to go something for maybe guard motor coordination tactics. Maybe even a, a sniper. It would be kind of interesting to see, to see a sniper team. Um, uncommon, but it could be kind of interesting to see nonetheless. Uh, nevertheless, penal troops can hold up pretty well to all early... Axis infantry. Um, you do see right now there's another squad of grenadiers coming out. Um, but if this machine gun gets into this church, we're going to need to see uh, some mortars getting called in here for the R Russians. That's not going to happen too easily. And indeed, you're going to see them come over here behind this house and think about their next move. It's not going to go too well for them. Combat engineers are going to get cut off over here by these grenadiers. And the peanut battalion troops say, oh, yeah, bro, oh, we'll, we'll get down there immediately. Jethlin said that, that his return on that one is going to go for a clown car. Um, not sure if maybe the best option. It will allow him to overrun and get outside the arc of fire for the machine gun, or at least that first one. There's a second machine gun coming out right about now, and once that comes out, oh, that clown car is not going to look too good now, is it? So the question really is, can the Russians kind of grip and rip their way around the, the map? Or will this kind of somewhat slow start really be their undoing? Um, clown car coming up with those 50 cals. 50 cals, yes. Two machine guns. Doesn't necessarily say what kind of caliber they are. Yeah, it's, there's 50 cals, at least in the front. Um, and, wow, the Grenadiers charge forward trying to take on these penal troops and get savaged by that instead. And indeed, Grenadiers come up as well and say, Yo, bro, you might want to back up before we threaten to throw ourselves a panzer fast at you, even though there's no possible way we could have teched up just yet. Um, so now these penal troops, pretty much everything Russian is centered around this church. Apparently a very active faith life in this community. Uh, but they're going to get in turn outflanked by this other machine gun. And it's going to be partisans. Partisans are the the order of the day, and although the clown car has not been the same kind of action they were hoping to, you know, same kind of effectiveness they've been hoping for, these partisans rush up and grab that MG42. Question really is, can this machine gun get away in time? Um, considering all the flame and the fire that's going to be thrown in their direction, my guess is yes, but it's not going to be easy. You see these guys doing the whole little Russian dance to get out of there. I feel like I'm watching. Um, Oh my gosh, what was the what was the movie that had Daniel Craig and Leif Schreiber playing the brothers that were saving all the Jews? I forget what that was called. Clown Car, in the meantime, is still hung up over here on this church. And it seems everything's centering right around this one building right here. No one's pushing to get that VP in the south. No one seems to be concerned about that at all. And indeed, this machine gun, a second machine gun, has been called in on top of that house. And once that happens, we'll see these, these penal troops, no doubt retreat back to home base here. Yep, any second now. Any second. There we go. Grenadiers slide around to the south, uh, southern side trying to pick up the strategic point, cut off a little bit more of this um, Soviet supply situation, but it's not going to happen. They do have that 
strategic point and um, fuel point right here. So between the two groups, the scout car and that uh, partisan squad being called in, shockingly enough, Jeselin is still very much in this, fri in, in this fight. <laughs> kind of also funny to notice that right now we do see that these partisans are going to have a rude awakening the next time they come out of this garrison, and believe you me, that will happen. Dev Emmett just wants him to do it. He's begging him to do it. But it seems it's not too much of a concern, at least immediately, and instead we're going to see finally these partisans take over this church, for the PPSs, and they realize, wait, we don't want to be there. It doesn't have anything to do with us. And instead they captured MG42 with their bajillion and a half peasants are going to uh, cap out the building. Part of me kind of wonders, really, if the... Um, Models and a reinforced squad have the same health as all their other brethren. So, for example, the uh, partisans over here are going to recrew this captured machine gun, but will they have the same health as partisans in terms of received accuracy and all that, or will it just be to whatever a um, what a what a machine gun squad might be otherwise? In the north, we're going to see that a flamethrower has cleared out this garrison, um, and indeed, what had looked rather dire for the Russians, at least immediately, it seems to be resolving itself much more agreeably now, as these penal troops are able to get those Rock 3 flamethrowers. And I'm noticing now that his opponent does have a the Leichter Mechanized Company has come out. Will it be... A savage, savage assault by a light vehicle, or will it just be much more restrained? Um, what is safe to say is that these grenadiers and these penal troops do need to back off before they cut each other to ribbons. Although down in the center portion of the map, we're going to see that these uh, <laughs> pios are going to have just enough opportunity to back away. South, it's good to notice that, on the deep south rather, that it's good to notice that these Grenadiers are going to be able to take this VP away, or actually rather cap it for the first time, I think, on the entire map thus far. But we'll give it up almost immediately as these penal troops try to knock off a model or two. And now that I'm thinking about it, the 2 2 2 on the map, but the question is, as the Soviet, do I just call in anti tank partisans? I think that might be the best way to go about this. He sees it. He's going to carve him up, I'm sure. Um, just spawn us out of this house. And you'll see him seen off the field rather quickly. But instead, it doesn't seem like he's going to go and you know take the bait on that too quickly. Um, and indeed, his own his clown car is going to take some damage. There we go. Anti-tank partisans have been called in. A round goes off. Impacts in the back of that 2-2-2. Two, two, two. We'll see him to safely retreat away. Penal Battalion troops are going to take some fire. They're, that house is taking a fair beating so far. Eight minutes in, 480 to 490. Um, shockingly enough, not really being that that devastating thus far for either well, really either player. Do you want to see? He does know that the minefield is there, so he's going to be very very cautious about that. I'm sure. Um, and moving around to the southern portions, maybe might be the best idea. Well, one penal troop will come down and start cooking up the weenie roast, or the, yeah, I guess the weenie roast might be the best way to say that. Um, while the Germans do push forward another machine gun, to looking to lock down that garrison as much as possible. The enemy has taken our supply sector. And have I not mentioned the commanders just yet for Insane Dev M? I'm pretty sure I have, but just in case, yes, I think I have. Mechanized, yep, I have. I was thinking to myself, guys, you know, it's I'm getting old. Almost a, almost a three decades of life. Got a couple years yet, but almost a three decades of life. So every, every now and again, your memory just doesn't get so good, right? Grant, in the meantime, putting fire down on top of this house, um, and a couple of explosions randomly occur that will see the penal troops booking it out of there. But Jeslin doesn't seem too bothered by this. He's got all the fuel on the map that he could ever want. And I'm kind of wondering why he hasn't already called in a T-70. The only reason I can think to that is because he doesn't necessarily need to have that light vehicle. In the south, the penal troops are going to force back yet again. More flamethrowers, more 222. But again, it, it's even when he's getting pushed back, 
Jeslin is not taking incredible losses. I mean, his troops are slowly building veterancy. They are slowly building up, slowly doing their thing. Partisans can get, get inside this house, and with a base of fire that they have from there, these grenadiers are not going to last long, and do intelligently do at least a soft retreat away. But now we got to see this 222 is going to uh, pressure the scout car, but it will take some of its own fire from this machine gun in return. And both vehicles limp away with about the same amount of health, about 15-20% health. Partisans are just kind of chilling up in this house, not, don't really need to them to be really kind of aggressive about anything. And it's true that the Germans are mounting a little bit of a comeback, not a huge one, but a tiny bit of a one. But right now, still, they have all the fuel they could want. They have the tank of the battalion command out. The only thing they haven't really pushed for at all is that late game. Um, oh, dear God, what is it called? Brain fart. I'm having such a brain fart right now. Uh, the heavy armor core. But, you know, you, know, you bring in... I uh, can't think of it. Wherever you bring in that um, juicy, juicy T-34s and the uh, SU-85s. Of course, though, he has just gone and used that spy network, and this thing is ultra cheap for what you get for it. You get to see whatever your opponent's got for 15 seconds. So he knows there's a sniper out. He knows where that sniper's pretty much going, too. Uh, it seems the sniper at the moment, though, is going to slide up to the north, and the scout car is just waiting for that thing to start unloading like crazy. Oof. Even more devastating the fact that these two penal troops are now sli uh, sidling up and going to start cooking these grenadiers like crazy. Um, mine has gone down to the north. So what has been a very, very big position for the Germans just to the north of this garrison is going to kind of fall apart a little bit. And yep, there we go. That's what's coming down now. Mechanized Armor Company. How the heck can I not think of that? You'd almost think that like, Russian really wasn't my first language. So the sniper has gotten himself a couple of kills, and insane Dev M seems to be getting slowly back onto his feet. Shockingly enough, there's still not been a bunch of um, tickets lost on either side. 12 minutes into this game, 12:20 right now. But you can't hate any of these guys if you're being very, very cautious and honestly very, very good about controlling the battle space here. Partisans are going to take some fire from this 222, but anti tank partisans, and this is going to continue to be a nuisance, but so will that sniper. So the question really is can penal troops take out that sniper and retreat? The quick answer to that is no, but they will get the strategic point while it seems the anti tank partisans will slide back up and probably cap out that fuel point. And the T 3476 is going to be the call in for Jezelin, and there's nothing at all, really, on the map that can be holding out against that. At least on the German side of things. Scout car is still up. He's still kind of roving all over the place while the Germans make a push up here to the north. Uh, a three squad and a vehicle push. So not inconsiderable. Um, the problem with that is that there's just so much green cover over here, which means that that flamethrower is just going to be so, so good against cooking all those bad guys. Um, and while those Panzergrens are very good in short range firepower that flamethrower does even a lot of the battlefield and would have continued to do so had that t that 222 not been there but the 76 is going to hit the field right about now there we go so the 76 is on the field and there is nothing that can even come close to scratching even scratching the paint on that bad boy and the captured mg throws down the armor piercing incendiary rounds and just cooks that 222 in about three seconds. So the question becomes, will Dev M try to tech up really, really quickly to battle phase two? To pick up a support armor core? Or will he go for um, that? Oh no, he's just going to stall out and say he's going to bring in Stroke's, I think, to be his anti-tank presence. So there's that Stroke E. But against a T-3476, I, I don't know if it's really going to crack the armor on that bad boy. It's not any kind of effectiveness. And really, Jeslin is pretty, pretty close to actually being able to order in another T-34. Well, he, when he does so, um, his opponent won't have an answer at all. His P-Grants have not don't have the munitions to get the Shreks. This still can be circle-strafed like crazy. 
Although, shockingly, right now they both fire and they both just deflect rounds. But things like those anti-tank partisans will be enough to really, really butcher that stroke. Clown car charges forward, does pick up that sniper, so one of the most effective pieces of equipment that's on the field for the Germans is now defunct. And that scout car, what's that, overdrive? Okay, yeah, that little bad boy right there. Yep. You rarely if ever see it, though. Well, it's because it doesn't seem to be the most efficient use of resources. T-34 is going to slide up over here just outside the range of this Strug and now takes it in the rear. All he's got to do is just slide right behind it. And circle strafe. No marked vehicle coming out? Nope, never mind. He doesn't want to do that. He's just going to start running in after it and say, we can do it. Um, nope, never mind. Here comes a circle strafe. And shockingly, even though he's 15 feet away, he plows around into the, into the fields just outside. The healthy, healthy portions of his opponent's uh, notice. There goes the Stug. And at the same time, a demo charge has been thrown out by this um, penal battalion to the north. Explodes, giving us this gorgeous, gorgeous double fireball going on. And yep, and desperately, Dev M is going to try to put out a pack 40, but he is very much behind on this map already. Um, his P-Grants do go down at the same time. He has been shredded by the T-34 running into things and basically playing construction worker all by himself. And down in the south, these Grenadiers are going to have to charge right back through, retreat through the machine guns and the cannons of two, T two T-34s. Not inconsiderable pieces of equipment. I do remember the first time I actually saw the Pack 40 being used. I thought to myself, man, that thing is ridiculously awesome. And then I saw things like, you know, partisans take it out and all that kind of stuff like that. Um, so I was very, very sorely mistaken on that one. So Jeslin very much putting on a clinic. 17 minutes in, he's got this entire map locked down. T-34 is going to take a little bit of firepower from this Pack 40 but again, all he's got to do is just charge in and just decrew the thing, and he should be able to do that pretty easily. He's got two tanks, and he can build another one within the next minute or so. Actually, within the next, like, 20 seconds. Um, with a 2-1 to one cap advantage, he's up 70 tickets right now. Scout car to the north is going to try to put a little bit of pressure on top of these Grenadiers, but the Grenadiers should be able to even take out the scout car by themselves. Another burst of fire should do it. And he gives his life for the motherland. Um, Pack 40 is going to try to be a nuisance against these T-34s, but it seems another T-34 is going to replace the dead scout car, and that should be pretty much all she wrote, I think, for Dev M. Anti-tank partisans, actually, shockingly enough, there's not been a lot of usage of the Collins for Jeslin on this. He has used, you know, seeing where his opponent's stuff is for twice. And he's tossed down three times now. Two squads of partisans, and other than that, he's just been using it for that passive kind of information. The question is, can a T-34 actually aim and take out that mine? I don't know. So for the moment, it doesn't seem to be too important. Instead, he's going to get behind the Pack 40 And, oh, he takes a Panzer Faust for his troubles. But even slow as he is, that Pack 40 is not going to be quick enough to really get in and around him. And indeed, we're going to start to see all of these models getting picked off here. Penal Battalion Troop might go down. Yep, there he goes. He finally is dead. But there's still two T-34s up here. One with a damaged engine, mind you, but still t two T-34s. Should be able to pick up this squad. And yep, there it goes. And once that gets taken out, there's nothing to be done, I think, for Devenham's prospects, at least on the map in the short term, maybe even the long one. See, right now, all of his troops are huddled back in base. He's got four squads, but he's only got the troops to man, really, two of them. And using Spy Network, he's like, yo, bro, I know you got nothing left, man. You got nothing. Nothing. She knows where they are on the minimap, but, you know, doesn't have to worry too much about that. You can use it once every minute, too, with, with all the munitions that are coming in for him. He's, he is set, my friend. Um, question is, what, what will Dev M do? Because if anything left, my guess is no. In 1940, 468 to 361, he's got a fair amount of time if he wants to just kind of stall out and wait for another chance to uh, really call in some fresh troops here. Um, with the T-34s on the map, there's not a whole lot of chance to get 
anything left. What's he gonna do? Call another Shug? Shug's gonna come in and immediately get wrecked. Machine guns by themselves are getting savaged. Dear God. One one round apiece, and then two bursts of machine gun fire, and it goes down. It doesn't even matter who it is or what it is. If it's German, it's dying, and Dev M realizes that. He taps out 20 minutes and 15 seconds. Super short game, but well done to Jezlin on that one to really, really savage an early German push. Um, of course, guys, like I said, this was the finals for a series recently put out, WPC. Um... If you have a game you want me to check out, please let me know. Uh, ConorGaming at gmail.com and keep your eyes out for the map analysis, starting off with Angoville, as well as the EU4 multiplayer coming to you probably within about a week or so. Um, and guys, I will see you all soon.